can't find nothing on the radio. Ready, uh-huh. uh, they- uh, Welcome to Songology. He's Bruce. He's Richard. And this is another episode from our Song of the Day archives. Enjoy. Welcome back, Bruce. It sounds like we have somewhat of a random week. What's happening today? Well, I promised you lumpy mashed potatoes. This is the day, man. Lumpy mashed potatoes. Okay. Lumpy potatoes. Because yesterday we were talking about the monkeys, and we talked about how I threatened I was going to bring you an opening act for the monkeys. That's right, you did. On their a tour in 1967, the opening act for the monkeys was Jimi Hendrix. Now, okay. So pause for a moment and wrap your head around the combination of the monkeys and Jimi Hendrix. Now, that's something I would put together, but I can't imagine somebody out there in the musical world thinking that's a good idea for a live performance. Indeed not. It didn't go very well. In fact, it went rather badly Uh because, I mean, what was the crowd coming to see the monkeys was largely young girls who were coming to scream and kind of do the Beatle thing a little bit with the monkeys. And we're, so we're looking for this, this pure bouncy bubblegum pop. And so you're not looking for Jimi Hendrix, who was really starting at that stage to come into his own musically. Jimmy actually taught himself the guitar. Right. His dad saw him as a very, very young child fooling around with a broom pretending to play a guitar and so scrounged him somewhere a ukulele so jimmy was fooling around with that and eventually he got himself a guitar from somewhere taught himself to play because he's left-handed he essentially played the guitar upside down because he was you turn it over and the strings are the opposite way yeah. what any guitar players will do if they're left-handed is they will restring the guitar so that it is the conventional string arrangement but jimmy didn't do that he just played his upside down uh-huh. which was kind of a little odd now the legend is that that his dad found the guitar in a pawn shop, in the window of a pawn shop. I have not heard that, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. Okay, because somewhere there's conversation of what it would life have been like if it had been a saxophone in that window. <laughs> or the bagpipes. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix on bagpipes. Now, that, <laughs> what could he have, I have done there? Guy play, I have heard a guy play Purple Haze on the bagpipes. It was a unique experience. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a strange, strange And, and we, have, we have another artist who started his career on the ukulele. Indeed. It's actually sort of a common theme. So when Jimmy got going musically, he played backup guitar for Ike and Tina Turner, for Little Richard, for the Isley Brothers, and Wilson Pickett as well. And then he uh, farmed his first band, which was called Jimmy James and the Blue Flames in 1965. Now, Jimmy didn't really catch on, though, in the States the first go around. He was trying to do his thing. Didn't really work for him. He wasn't getting a lot of interest. And so he moved overseas, went to London, because the music scene in London was exploding over there. And he was embraced with open arms. And many of the musicians of the time, the Beatles and Eric Clapton, those guys were just really quite taken with this guy who sort of came out of nowhere. And look at the things that he can do because Hendrix was always really really innovative and experimental on the guitar now where do the potatoes come in you might ask where did the potatoes come in I'm glad you asked that. So he was living in 1967. He was living in London with his girlfriend, a lady by the name of Kathy Mary Etchingham. They got into an argument one night about her cooking. And the argument escalated and escalated. And it was about the lumpy mashed potatoes. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And eventually some crockery and pots and pans are flying back and forth. And this is just really not good. So she storms off in a half and is gone overnight and she comes back the next day and Jimmy had written a song for her which is called The Wind Cries Mary and she was really quite taken with that he didn't show it to anybody for the longest time it's not really known of course we can't ask him because he passed away in 1970 but he didn't really know what to do with it and so the story goes that he was he was in the studio they had 20 minutes of time left in their studio booking he showed 
the band this song that he'd written. And in the 20 minutes that they had, they cut The Wind Cries Mary. It is different from a regular, what you usually think of as, as Hendrix in the sense of, hey, you think of Purple Haze and Voodoo Child and those really wild and crazy. You got to remember that this is the guy who he followed The Who at the Monterey Pop Festival, big concert pre-Woodstock, but one of the really big early concerts. The Who finished their set with Pete Townsend smashing his guitar. What do you do to top that when you're following The Who and following that mayhem? Hendrix set his on fire. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, I mean, he could be kind of a wild man when he wanted. But here's Jimmy in one of his quieter moments with The Wind Cries Mary. And as usual, we have to get it right there while we work out the fair use rules on YouTube. These episodes first aired in 2014 as the Song of the Day segment on my morning show on 977 FM, Creston Valley's community radio station. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and don't forget to share this with your friends. Now, you can choose to listen to the music or go on to the next segment of Song of the Day with Bruce. <laughs> 